We are presenting yet another side by side comparison of the specs of three closely competing cars. All of them are three row electric vehicles currently available in the US. The Rivian R1S, the just arrived Kia EV9, and the Tesla Model X. Besides their features, we think that a side by side look at the specs of the cars provides users the information that best helps their buying decisions, especially when weighing the options available in a given market. Three row electric vehicles are particularly liked by families and groups seeking long and comfortable road trips. They are also favored for specific groups like children at football games or any such experiences where large groups travel together. These are also cars where users expect significant range and charging capabilities with long road trips in mind. So this is a small attempt to bring the EV9 alongside the two contending cars weighing their features side by side. All the specs, options and pricing in this video is as at the time of making it and from the websites of the OEMs unless specified otherwise. When making a decision, it's best to check for the prevalent offers and options relevant to your given conditions and location. The R1S is the three row SUV from Rivian following on its highly loved pickup truck, the R1T. The dual motor all wheel drive Rivian R1S is base priced at $78,000 without options. It has an EPA rated range of 260 miles in the optioned 105 kilowatt hour standard pack. That's a stated efficiency of 2.48 miles per kilowatt hour. All three available battery packs can be configured with the base dual motor all wheel drive. The performance all wheel drive, however, can only be configured with the large pack and the max pack, while the quad motor can only be configured with the large pack. We, of course, are only looking at the base dual motor all wheel drive with the standard pack in this video. The R1S is 200.8 inches long, 81.8 inches wide, and 77.3 inches tall. It has a wheelbase of 121.1 inches along with 14.9 inches of ground clearance. It has a max DC charge rate of 220 kilowatts and an onboard AC charger capable of delivering up to 11.5 kilowatts or 48 amps. Charging curves matter more in DC charging and the max rate means little if high enough rates are not held long enough in the charging sessions. On the performance, it's capable of doing a 0 to 60 in 4.5 seconds with 533 horsepower and 610 pound feet of torque in the trim and focus here. It also has 46.7 cubic feet of cargo space behind the second row and has a top speed of 125 miles per hour. The R1S is the heaviest of our selected trims at 7,068 pounds. The Rivian is a software defined electric car and brings a very delightful experience for its users. It's important to note the delivery time for this car and the after sales support, which may both depend on your location. Being software defined, it's constantly improving and like with all electric cars, users may have to figure out their convenient level 2 charging to make a good experience of it. That could be at home or work, but a large battery pack would require assured energy. That would apply to most electric cars, but especially those in this video with their large battery packs. I would use this car keeping the battery between 30 to 70 percent for the most part in my daily driving and charge it full only on long road trips. The R1S is capable of towing 7700 pounds, but like all EVs, towing could be a challenge, particularly for long distances and depending on the availability of reliable charging. Rivian's instructions for all of the above would be the ones to follow in the end. The very first thing to note with the EV9 are the inconsistencies we noticed in the communication around it. It's referred to as a 800 volt car like some of the other cars on the eGMP platform. But it is not as when we checked. The Kia website specifies the EV9 land at 552 nominal voltage. The pack voltage is a significant factor in the way a EV DC charges. eGMP cars have a unique way of using the rear motor inverter to boost the voltage and hence the charging speed in line with the DC charging system that enables these cars to fast charge on lower voltage charging systems. If you want to view the comprehensive specs of the EV9, check our video on it 
the link for which is in the description. The EV9 land, our trim in focus here, is 197.2 inches long, 69.1 inches tall, and 77.9 inches wide. It has an EPA rated range of 280 miles, a ground clearance of 7.8 inches, and a wheelbase spanning 122 inches. It has a 99.8 kilowatt hour battery pack that accepts high voltage energy at 210 kilowatts when DC charging and has an onboard AC charger rated at 10.9 kilowatts. That's also a stated efficiency of 2.81 miles per kilowatt hour. On performance, the trim delivers 379 horsepower and 443 pound feet of torque does 0 to 60 in 5.7 seconds and has a top speed of 124 miles per hour. It weighs 5,794 pounds and has 43.5 cubic feet of rare cargo space behind the second row. The EV9 Land dual motor all-wheel drive is listed at $69,900. It's surely a wonderful car by itself and the only thing to check for is its DC charging capability in the given US infrastructure. I have always loved Kia cars whenever I have been around them. The EV9 measures well on most parameters. Its space, interiors, comforts and driving ability are all to make users like it. I personally don't like the exterior boxy look, but that's an individual's preference. On the other side, it's pushing the competition on price. The dealer markups and availability of the lower price trims could be location dependent. All Tesla cars get a head start in any comparison with native access to the Tesla supercharger network. Though this will soon be available to many other EVs, it's not going to be anytime soon that the cars with the plugs and with all the other related things sorted come around. The Tesla Model X recently downscaled its stated EPA range from what I believe was 349 miles to 335 miles as on date. That's still comfortably higher than the other two in this comparison. And to me, really a figure of little significance with an access to DC charging that's so good. The Model X is 199.1 .1 inches long, 78.7 .7 inches wide, and 68.5 inches tall. It looks like the bulky SUV it's designed as. It has a wheelbase of 116.1 inches to go with its 8.1 inches of ground clearance. Its 95 kilowatt hour battery pack is fairly large and that shows a stated efficiency of 3.5 miles per kilowatt hour, which is very much in the range of the expected. Tesla vehicles though often fail to meet their stated range and range 2 is a moving variable with several factors to make a definite opinion with. So for now, the good charging is the key. It also has 250 kilowatts of peak charging and that again will need to be seen with the charging curve, which I have not. The 48 amp or 11.5 kilowatt level 2 onboard charger is standard now in the industry with such cars. On performance, it clocks 0 to 60 in 3.8 seconds in the base dual motor trim. It has 670 horsepower. The details on the torque were not available when I checked. Those in the know reliably can please drop in the comments. The Model X has 33 cubic feet of cargo space behind the row 2, which is a control factor here. It offers a top speed of 149 miles per hour and has a curb weight of 5,248 pounds. The Model X dual motor is priced at $79,990 and is eligible for the Clean Vehicle Tax Credit 2024 as on the date of making this video. But this eligibility is only with an option of color and any other change in the options could take away the tax credit. Tesla too has recently registered to offer this credit at the point of sale and hence when eligible, the buyers could see it being taken out of the price. All factors to be checked and verified by the buyers in their own given conditions. The Model X Falcon doors are an attraction for some but also the piece of engineering with most concern especially around its smooth functioning over a period of time. To me, it's something I would have easily done without. If you want to see the side-by-side -side comparison of specs of the three electric trucks, the Rivian R1T, the Ford F-150 Lightning and the Cybertruck, find the link here or in the description.
I appreciate your comments and interaction with our videos and look forward to them as always. You can see all the numbers in a single chart here and at the end of this video. Always check them at your own end when making any decisions, especially as the prices options are being changed rapidly by the OEMs to adjust to the changing demand. I hope this proves useful to those in the market for a car of this kind and are able to make value of the comparison we presented here. See you in the next one.